podcast beer on the 10th of June 2020. Uh, another Greek wine, but it's red this time. You, know, you all know about my um, penchant for, for Greek wines in general, but uh, and particularly the whites. But uh, you know, the reds get overlooked, um, I think, quite often. So we are the 2017 vintage Liatico. Liatico is the great variety. The cuvee is called Daphneos, so another reference to. Um, uh, Bailey's really, um, which you find a lot in, in wine in uh, Loureiro in Portugal and Daphne, the grape variety and also uh, Cretan. This for this is indeed a Cretan wine. 2017 uh, Liatico Daphneos from a firm called Dulufakis. Um, and we're looking at something that looks a bit like a Pinot Noir in the glass actually. It's, it's clearly it's got some age. Uh, it fades from sort of tomato garnet at the core to much more sort of slightly mahogany bricking at the at the rim but not not particularly deep in color and that um, nose is very interesting funny enough it seems to change every time i go back to it which it's got a sort of firm earthiness about it a distinct character and then this rather nice pure almost Pinot-like, domestic red, right through. The smell's really quite classy. There's a high, high-toned aspect to this nose, something sort of pitched up and um, really lifted. There are floral notes, perhaps, and hint of hazelnut and chocolate and no more than a hint, and perhaps something a little smokier, sort of singed earth thing. It's it's a fascinating nose, you know. There's lots of complexity here, and um, it smells fresh as well. Let's see if it tastes fresh. Mm. That's that lovely plush entry, but it's cool. It's not sort of a, an amorphous lump. It's got a nice plush ripeness. And very quickly it, it develops um, direction, a spine of structure that starts with the acidity and, and quickly gathers the tannin as well. And the tannin through the palate becomes more sort of um, pippy, more more upright, more um, yeah, more more architectural um, as it goes on. It, it's they're, they're fine, but they've, as I say, they've got this pippy, almost almost slightly bitter quality, which. I don't mind in any way. I, I, I have no problem with bitterness in, in wine as long as it's not overdone. I think it just adds to the structure and the sense of, of, of freshness about the wine. It's a really fascinating, fascinating thing. It's taking on a darker aspect of the fruit now. This has been open um, only 10 minutes or so. Ooh. You know, when you taste it, you um, it's a great substitute for burgundy, actually. It's sort of burgundy-ish weight. It looks a bit like burgundy in the glass. But actually, that structure, that tannic structure, the fruit character, you kind of, if you're giving it blind, you, I think you'd sit there going, oh, I wonder what that is. It's um, it's quite un quite unusual. And I'm really enjoying it. I, I, it needs food. I think it, it needs food, and, and as with burgundy, look, look, look for la look to lamb, um, perhaps because of those the strength of those those um, tannins, go hog it, or even or even mutton. Um, it's a lovely thing. Um, yeah, a piece of mutton with with rosemary would be super. That earthy nuttiness is a real is a real. Um, Red part of this wine. It's 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 fascinating. It's complex. It's it. I think it's nicely made, and I suspect that is very communicative of of that great variety. I don't know much about the Attico. I don't even know if I've tasted one before, but um, I like it. Uh, that should be landing with. I selected it some time ago. It should be landing with daily drinkers any any day. But um, that's been 2017. Liatico Daphneos from the firm of Dulafakis in uh, in Crete in uh, in Greece and uh, I think it's a real fascination I hope you do too give us feedback love to hear what you think